Hello, I'm Sarah, the RT teacher. Um, I was talking to some art teachers the other day and I was showing them my website and they were surprised by all the different um, stuff that was available there. They didn't realise how much stuff there was, especially all the free stuff and useful pages of information. So I decided to make this video to help all art teachers know uh, and easily find out about the great free stuff on my site. Let's take a look. So here's my lovely home page, and you'll see lots of menu items across the top. Free resources about me, facts, blog, contact, subscribe. You'll only have this manage school subscriptions if you're the purchaser of a school subscription for um, more than two people. You've got your profile name if you're logged in here. Lots of useful things nested under that. Log out home learning page, lots of resources. Oh my goodness, lots of useful categories there we'll come back to. Arty stuff, there's all sorts of treasures here. Artist presentations and sub lessons. Little search tool, this massive search bar here. Subscribe, and there's your little cart. Now, if we scroll down, we've got the latest resources always on the home page and the latest blog posts. Um, more resources. And then here at the bottom, we've got different ways to subscribe and we'll come back to that. So that's the home page. So I mentioned free resources. Let's take a closer look at that. So you can see we've got the free resources menu item here. You just click on that and uh, look, wow, at the time of recording this, I've got 72 free resources. And if you scroll down that page, you can see all sorts of uh, wonderful different things. Just click at the bottom to see more natural forms, uh, photography rubrics, um, posters, spot the difference with a Degas, marine life images, an assessing a drawing resource, icebreakers, um, art interview questions. Oh my goodness, so much. List of black artists, um, skull artists. Let's just keep going. Uh, oh, and you know, this is something here I really love doing is creating presentations about artists, always with their permission. I contacted Ben Hine in this instance, interviewed him and got first hand information for you to use and what he wants you to use with his with your students. Now, if you've got a subscription, the free subscription, you can just press that download now button and download three of the free resources um, every month. So this is a great way to kind of sample my resources. So let's take a look at some of the other resource categories. So under the resources menu, you'll find all sorts of things nested. 3D, art assessment, art literacy, artist resources, colour theory, digital art, drawing, elements of art, extension tasks, image library, grid drawings, mark making, painting, photography, portraits, starters and bell ringers, units of work and zentangles. Let's take a look at the uh, starters and bell ringers, for example. These are very popular. Guess the name of the artwork, odd one out, um, five art analysis starters, uh, there's some um, matching cards so for your children to to, uh, to sort and all sorts of other wonderful things that you can find and explore here. One of the things I think has made my website so successful is the blog. Um, I try and write a blog post at least once a week. Sometimes I fail. Uh, I've been an art teacher for 20 years. So I just pour 20 years worth of experience into the blog posts I write. And of course, I talk to lots of other teachers. I communicate, share ideas, and um, other teachers have written blog posts for me, or you know, we've pooled expertise, or I've questioned things on social media and poured all that expertise into, into my blog. And some of my blogs have had you know, a phenomenal amount of traffic. So let's look at some of the um, really popular ones now. So you can get to the blog up here by this menu item, but the blog is also fully searchable. So you can add in any, any uh, sort of search words you want here. I've got a very popular blog post on apps. So let's press search. And you can see here that it's highlighted the resources. So it's showing me resources. But if I click on posts, it will then show me any posts for that word. So this first one there, apps for art teachers. Let's take a look on that. This has had over 100,000 views and it's just some of the apps that 
I like to use in the art classroom with my students. I'm lucky at my school that everyone has iPads, but if, if uh, you don't, sometimes you can borrow iPads. So that's been a very popular post. So you can see here at the side, there's lots of different uh, blog categories, you know, inspiration, techniques and processes, pedagogy, artists, running an art department, workload. Uh, techniques and processes is a very popular one. How to create scraffito. Um, that one there is about visiting artists, gestural drawings, drawing on surfaces. Sketchbook circle was a sketchbook exchange I took part in. Um, photographing through oil and water exploring cyanotype, five ways to extend student work, so much to see. So I mentioned the menu item, arty stuff. What on earth is that? Well, I'm pleased to say there's all sorts of really useful free things to check out. Let's take another look at that. So here's the menu item, arty stuff, and you can see the top thing is art lesson plans. So if you click on that, this just gives you an overview of some of the things on the site. So exciting techniques and processes, complete units of work, popular resources, uh, art lesson plans for teaching portraits, art lesson plans for teaching color theory, engaging boys in art, art literacy. Now that's uh, a real hot potato here in the United Kingdom. Um, assessment resources, um, sub and cover lessons, and Zentangles. So this is by no means all the resources on the site, it's just a little bit of an overview and I update that regularly. The next thing under Arty Stuff is my famous Artist Listed by Theme page. So this is simply an enormous list of themes such as alphabets with artists, uh, names and hyperlinks underneath. So you can click on those and it will take you to the artist's website. So altered books, artists who've done those, animals in art, lots of artists who feature animals, art and words and artists with autism. So this list, it goes on and on, a huge amount of categories. And uh, it's just so useful if you're researching things uh, for units of work or if you've got older students and you want them to work independently they can come to this page and they can find artists for their areas of interest. So just flowers, food, hands, oh my goodness, identity, Hispanic uh, artists, oh yes I'd like to um, see that category grow, um, isolation artists, that's something that grew in lockdown. So I'm continually adding to this page. Um, other art teachers have helped me grow this. I'm always open to art teachers helping me and making suggestions. Shoes, sport, that's a good one for boys. Um, still life, uh, suspended. Some of these are in response to um, exam paper questions, which we've had here in the UK. Uh, and then if you go at the top, you've got photographers listed by theme and ceramicists listed by theme, and those are, are growing. So here's the photographers page. As you can see, it's got some categories. If you teach photography, please come and help me grow this page. Um, ceramicists listed by theme. Let's have a little look at that. So, um, you know, ceramicists who featured natural forms or portrait busts or they've uh, wheel thrown. So that is certainly pages that are in development. Next on this arty stuff menu is art education books. And if you click on that, you come to this page where I've got some recommendations. So here you can see there are pedagogical art teacher books. Um, these are things that I have read or other people have re recommended to me. I've read a lot of them. Um, so some good suggestions there. Uh, then we've got a teaching photography section, um, theoretical art books, some good recommendations there. I've read all of those. And then we've got, oh, teaching photography again. Well, that's a mistake. Shouldn't have that there on twice. I'll have to sort that out. Um, practical art books, um, some lovely, beautiful, inspiring things there to inspire your lessons. Um, art history, um, the story of art by Gombrich. That's a um, fantastic overview. And as you can see here, it says, what would you recommend? Please get in touch. I'd, I'd love to have even more books on this page. So the next page is an art dictionary. Super useful. So here we have it, arty stuff, art dictionary. Let's click on that. And it's split up into three categories. First of all, we have uh, general art terms. 
You can scroll down, you can see all sorts of things then written in a sort of child friendly way. And uh, then we also have uh, ceramic terms and printing terms, super useful. So I use that art dictionary page as a really simple good art literacy homework. I send my students the link and specific words that I want them to look up which relate to the sort of work that they're doing in school. Um, they add that to a glossary in the back of their sketchbook and that's a fantastic way just to evidence that art literacy is happening in your classroom. If you teach older students, you're absolutely going to love my arty students section of the website because here I have got complete projects by students. So um, I photographed every single page of a student's sketchbook and it sort of documents their journey, the complete journey they've been on through in a project and uh, leading up to creating some sort of final outcome. So you can see here it's got um, different sorts of research and photography and beautiful um, artworks that they've done in their sketchbook using a range of different media. It's got their annotation, mind maps. This one has digital work and beautiful painting. So it, it documents a journey. And this is something that's so wonderful to share with uh, our students. Um, this is a very intellectual student. It's really worth uh, reading all the different um, annotation. She, you can see she's really experimented with all sorts of things like stitching and digital work, as well as wonderful um, drawing and painting. And um, that there is the final piece. So uh, that's the arty students section of the website. So I have uh, two pages on colour theory and you can see the different spellings there. So one is for the States and one is for the UK. So um, let's click on the States one with the this spelling. Now I've created these because I wanted somewhere to direct my students to which had the definitions and information that uh, I wanted them to have. Um, I felt that there was a lot of confusing information um, out there on the internet um, so this is really useful. I hope you uh, check out these colour theory pages. So next under the arty stuff uh, menu is the professional development for art teachers link. Then this takes you to a super useful page where you can see by country um, there is a big list of professional development providers. Also under arty stuff, we've got TED Talks. Now we've all enjoyed TED Talks, but all of them on this page are art specific. They are, they are super to inspire you or to send your students to or as starting points for projects. So the next page on my website I'm really excited about because it is completely unique to my website. Let's take a look. So under arty stuff, the last thing on the list. Now this is only available with a paid for subscription, but it's kind of cool, so I'm gonna show you anyway. It is a fantastic way to get students to compare and contrast two paintings um, using a Venn diagram. So let's just take a look at how we do this. So you can add any artist's name. Now you'll see lots of boxes here, they're all editable, but what I have written is fairly basic. Try that out first. There's a space here at the bottom to add a word bank. So I'm adding some relevant words here now for Kusama. So let me think spots, colour, installation, oil painting. That, that should do just to show you. Um, you need to pre-save two images um, before you do this. So I've got an installation and an oil painting here. So I've just added those. And there it gives you a little bit of a preview. But to look, uh, this is exactly how it will print here. So you can see you've got two artworks, you've got a space to write about them individually and then the section in the middle um, to put the similarities. So you've got similarities and differences. That's what makes a Venn diagram so useful. And you can make an unlimited amount of these. So one of the events that have uh, sort of catapulted my website to success uh, was actually COVID. Um, during the very start of the pandemic, my daughter dared to cough at school and we were both sent home. And I was on it like this, creating home learning resources. And uh, I created more and more and they were super popular during the pandemic. I created a home learning page on my website. I really, really hope you don't need this. 
um, and that going forward we are all going to be in our classrooms where we want to be. Uh, so uh, I'll just very quickly show you this page and hope that you don't need it. So you can reach the home learning page here from this uh, menu item and there's a whole page full of resources. At the top um, are the ones which are no need to print because I soon learnt that lots of students don't have printers at home so they just need to be viewing something on screen and having um, a paper uh, and pencil uh, in front of them. Uh, I had to be creative so there's lots of drawing resources or uh, there's some painting with coffee and photography and arranging things in the garden. The making faces was very popular uh, for younger students. I'm a high school art teacher so my students are age 7, um, sorry age 11 to 18. Down here some sort of print at home ones, these were the ones that I created first where right at the beginning teachers wanted packs they could print and send home to students. All sorts of uh, interesting things there. Right at the bottom we've got some sort of free sort of blog posts and YouTube videos. Um, some of these things were incredibly popular. This creating uh, shadows, creating with shadows was enormously popular. That was a video and students could um, use shadows cast by their phones um, with that. And then this coffee art one was very popular as well. Um, you can see that there's sort of step-by-step -step pictures here which students can follow. Uh, inspired by bark and then painting with instant coffee. Um, so that's just one of the many things on that page which can inspire you. Other sections of the website that are worth knowing about are the artist's presentations and of course the sub or cover lessons. So I'm pleased to say that all these artists presentations are free. There are presentations on single artists like the Sarah Graham here or this Natural Forms presentation shows you a selection of artists who fulfil that theme. Clary Reese, she's a great one because she mixes art and science by creating artworks in Petri dishes. Ben Hine we've spoken about. Robin Brooks is a collage artist. Kaz Holmes textiles. Christina Trufer, a painter. Close-ups, lots of artists and insects, uh, lots of artists who follow those themes. Carrie Ann Schumacher makes those wonderful paper dresses. Costa Magaricus is these fabulous shoes, altered shoes. And Guy Denning with his wonderful gestural drawings. And of course, in each case, I've spoken and had permission from the artist to um, show their work. Um, so sub and cover lessons we can see here. Um, it's always good, obviously, to have a bank of these. We never know what's around the corner. And here you'll find a wonderful selection. I think there's nearly 50 uh, different sub and cover lessons. And of course, the best work left for students whilst we're away is to carry on the learning that they were, in some way, that, that they were doing with us. And it's my hope by having a huge range on here that something will fit in with what you're already teaching. So uh, check out the sub lessons. So let me tell you just a little bit about the various subscriptions that are available because they really do make my resources incredibly good value. So click on subscribe and save and it'll take you to this page. You can change your currency to whatever you might like that to be on this drop down list and you'll see that the page will update. Now it's in dollars and you can see the free subscription here on the left and the monthly price there. Um, of $9.99 per month for 10 resources. Download 10, any resources. Um, you can change that to an annual price um, of $99 so you can see that that is a saving there. Um, so the annual is slightly better value than the monthly. Um, and then over on the right hand side here we have a school subscription. Now that's if you want to have more users because the the other subscription is just for one person, but if you're a department of two, three, four, five, six or more people, you can select that. You can see that the price changes and there each person will be able to download 10 resources a month. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to tell you about my website. Uh, I hope you can see that I pour my, my heart and soul into this website. My driving thought is how can I make this better for art teachers? That's what I always try and ask myself that question. 
Um, I think one of the things that has made it better and better is, is because people have fed back to me what they like, what they don't like, what they want more of, what they want less of. So do get in touch. I'm always pleased to hear from art teachers. The website does have a fax page on it for the frequently asked questions. Um, uh, so you may find some answers you want there. But as I say, I'm always delighted to hear from art teachers. My email address is info at theartyteacher.com. That's the only email I, uh, address uh, I've got that comes straight to me. So do get in touch if there's any questions you'd like to ask. So thank you.